goody two shoes <laughs> when I went down there. Met a good friend from Sangerville that he and I, I I'd never seen him. I knew I'd seen him around somewhere, but uh, I was on the street in Hartford. Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, I'd been hired by Pratt & Whitney. See, what we did was we went to the National Youth Administration Training Center in Cape Bay Scott down in Dexter. Mm -hmm. And they taught us, or tried to teach me, the machinist game. I did all right at it. I got so I could handle mill machines and radial drills and know how to read a micrometer, a vernier. Was that at Pratt and Whitney? No, this was at Faye Scott. This was at Faye Scott, yeah. And I left there and went. This was before the war, 19, it was in the 40s, 19, late 40s. I had got out of high school in June and I went down there and, and I, we had, we stayed in what was in the old hotel there that's gone. Used to be, there's a warehouse right there where it used to be. And they had fellows from all over the state that, that came and were taking the train. And, uh, but they, I, uh, they were pushing things. They were just, you know, we weren't at war, but they were getting, you know, they were getting, they needed, needed people. They needed yeah. people that knew how to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, and knew how to do it. Well, uh, I went down to uh, Benefit. Went to work at Chuck, um, um, Sockle Low Machine Shop. I worked there and run mill machines and all, to lay little drills. They made textile machinery. And then I, a woman named Bernice Martin, who was a relative of ours from Shirley, my father's family, uh, she was visiting here. Well, my mother was still here, of course, running the switchboard. And, uh, and Bernice said to me, I was up visiting, she said, you know, they're paying awful good money down in Connecticut. I said, what are they giving? She said, well, I heard 55 cents an hour. I said, God, I'm only getting 35 cents down here in Lacalo. I thought about it. I, was, I said, I've got to make a change. Well, I'm still, incidentally, trying to get back home and see Flippy every once in a while to, to keep her. I, I wanted to make enough money so I could get her. For the, then I was going to ask her to marry me, you know. Anyhow, Florence. I struck out for Maybe. Connecticut. With Filled my suitcase full. There's a hayseed sticking right out of the suitcase. <laughs> I, mean, I climb on the bird of it. Climb on the big greyhound bus and down I went. Well, I arrive in Hartford about one o'clock in the morning. And I says, well, God, I guess I got to. I, I didn't know. I, I knew where my, I knew where Bernice lived. I had her address, and I also knew she worked at the Sears and Roebuck store. But I I said, God, I got it's, it's awful late. I shouldn't have to disturb her. So they had a traveler's aid guy there, you know. And you know, here I am with my suitcase, and I walk up to him and I says. Uh, I, I, I guess I need to find a place to stay. And he, he looks at me and he says, he says, I'm just about to close up. He says, you stay right there. The guy closed up, closed his thing, his uh, traveler's aid. He takes me, leads me across down the street and puts me in the old Barnett Hotel. 
I said, oh God, what's this going to cost? Well, he says, I talked to him, it would be a dollar and a half. And I said, oh, all right, I got, I got, I think I got ten bucks still left. And uh, so I stayed there overnight. Well, I wake up the next day and I said, well, where the heck am I anyway, you know? I, I didn't have enough sense to know if I could get a hold of a map of the city or anything, but I happened to be on what was called Allen Street. And I asked the guy, I said, Sir, where's the Sears Roebuck store? And the guy said, oh, you said, it's right up there on Main Street. You go right up here, you know. Well, walking along with a suitcase, and I walk in the Sears store, and I, I says, uh, Bernice Martin here. And the guy, I know, well, says, yeah, he says, who are you? I said, well, I'm, I'm, um, I'm his cousin from Maine. He looks and says, stay right there, he says. <laughs> <laughs> he goes out and gets Bernie, he says, well, Kenneth, she said, how will you guys do that? How are you doing here? <laughs> so, she's stuck with me now for two days. <laughs> she's got a little dinky apartment down in there. <laughs> well, they rigged up a place for me to sleep. Next day, I got up and I'm starting to get a little more familiar with things now. And she told me what to do to get onto this particular bus and go over. In those days the buses were cheap. You could, for 10 cents or a quarter, you know, just dropped in the thing and you went over. Went over to Pratt and Whitney, walked in the door, and I said, sir, I says, I'm wondering if you people might want to hire me. All right. And the guy said, yeah. He said, well, wait here. Oh, I was a woman. She said, you wait here. And she thought, I went into this guy's office and he looked me over and he said, well, he asked what I'd been doing. I said, well, I had gone, worked at James Scott and I had also worked at Chaco Lowell. I had run a couple of machines. He says, don't you go away. You come tomorrow morning, tell you anything, you've got a job. <laughs> All right, that was the magic words back then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my mother worked at Pratt & Whitney yeah. as a machinist. Oh, wow. She trained as a machinist. Yeah. And we have her book, her training book. It was oh. the War Department training for, to yeah. be a machinist. Oh, for heaven's sake. And say. she worked there at the same time. Yes. Uh, and then oh. ended up coming, she was from way up in northern Maine. But she ended up coming to Monson and marrying my father. My Is that so? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you ever know her, Bernie? No, uh, not really. I knew of her. Yeah. And of course, as you said, uh, she was the one that came up. No, not your mother. Oh, that's that Cookie's mother. Uh, uh, Cookie's uh, Yeah, right. right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of your grandmother. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, my my no. mother. Uh, did you know, you knew Bob Greenleaf? Yeah. Yeah, and Dag, did you know Dag Greenleaf, his mm -hmm. wife? Dagmar? Well, Ma Mary Greenleaf was in high school with me. Yeah, right. That, that was a sister yeah. to Bob. So he left in 1905. Oh, Barbara? So. There was a Barbara Greenleaf? Yeah. Well, Bob, after the war, Bob married Dag Ryder. Oh, Bob Greenland. Yes. He married Dagmar Ryder. Mm -hmm. And and Dagmar and my mother met at Pratt and Whitney. Uh -huh. and, Is that so? and that's how my mother came to Monson mm -hmm. was when she came with Dag. And yeah. and my father lived right across the street and yeah. Isn't it amazing during that yeah. period of time? Small world in a way. How yeah. many when you start comparing stories. Things. 
mm-hmm. are, are circled around Pratt and Whitney yeah. and Electromotive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yes. mean, they were major, major players yeah. Yeah. then. My father went down there and worked yeah. as well. I think yeah. every, I mean, there was yeah. like this mass migration yeah. Yeah. for the war. Yeah. yeah. So we did have a girl down here. <laughs> I'm trying to get the story of the church behind the... No, 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 yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, I had worked there at uh, Pratt & Whitney for, oh, first of all, of course, I had to find some place else I'd be camping on my cousin. And she said that there was a fellow that was keeping company with her daughter and uh, so he said he took me and, and he said I will share the room uh, you know he finally married that daughter and uh, but you know in those days we slept in the same bed yeah yeah and uh, thank God that's changed <laughs> Oh, that's my father, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long did you work at Pratt & Whitney? I, I see, that would have been 1940, beginning of uh, 41. 41, 42, 43, 42. No, I worked there until when was Pearl Harbor? 41. 41. December 41. Yeah. Uh, I stayed, uh, uh, the, my name came up for the draft. Uh, in the, of course, I'd moved out to a different place at that point. And yeah. then there's a lot of, but, uh, and I'd met a fellow from Sangerville. He and I, he became one of my best friends. We. We didn't know each other up here, but we recognized, we'd seen each other around, you yeah. know. Yeah. And we, Clarence Grant, his name was, he was from Silver's Mills. Clarence what? Grant. Grant. Grant, Grant. okay. Yeah. Nice man. Yeah. Uh, one of the best friends I ever had. Oh. And we teamed together. And, uh, Every time our names would come up on the draft, Pratt and Whitney would put in for a deferment. Well, we kept getting deferred, and we kept getting deferred, and kept getting deferred. It would be about every couple of months, you know, and then up we'd come again. And they did. I said, one of these days they're going to say, no more, you got to go. Hmm. So I said, I think I'll. I think I'll volunteer for what I want to get into. So I walked in, volunteered for the uh, the, Air the Air Force, Air Corps, was called part of the Army in those days. It wasn't a separate you know. And uh, sure enough, I was inducted. And but by this time, it's pretty late in the war. I had got, I had 43, 44, 45, yeah, I was in for about two and a half years, and I, I was in training all that time. I never get, never went in, uh, uh, and uh, what happened was that the, uh, they finally succeeded in pretty much shooting the lift off out of the air. They decided they wouldn't, weren't going to need as many uh, airmen yeah. or mm-hmm. whatever they put me in. I, want, I, I, they were, I thought that I wanted to be a pilot, but at any rate, uh, I, I, they kept de- delaying us. We were in a class called 45C. 1945 was supposed to be when we went into training, but it didn't. But by 45, they got all we had left to fight was Japan. Yeah. Well, they said to me one day, 
we're, we're not going to call on, we don't need you. Now, you're in the army. Do you want to, what, what, do you want to go in the infantry? And I said, I, I don't think I strictly care for that. That's an understatement. <laughs> and the guy says, well, he says, uh, I understand they've, that there's a possibility that uh, they're looking for people to be flight engineers on these big planes, the B-29s. He says you'd have to uh, apply and take a test to see whether they were. I take it, I says. I go down and they, I look in the test door and it wasn't too bad. I got, I got, I got a bit of a decent score. He says, you're in. <laughs> and so, now, hell, I've been in one base after another, after another, after another, you know, while they were holding us up because they weren't, uh, well, they didn't need us. Mm -hmm. So, where did they put me up? In Amarillo, Texas, the damnedest place I ever saw in my life. <laughs> right in sort of a desert area up in the Panhandle. And that's where I trained to be a B-29 engineer. No oh, great, I'm going to get my, get my warrant officer things and I'm going to be a... Well, I'm all set to go. I've completed the course. I'm waiting to be assigned to a flight crew. Guess what happened? They dropped the bomb. Ah. Oh. Yep. What did you think about that when you heard that happen? What did you, did you think that's it? The war's gonna be over? Well, I don't know. Funny thing is, so I said, so they've dropped a bomb. Uh, you know, we didn't really think it was that serious to be quite, well, I didn't. Yeah. And then when they dropped it on Nagasaki too, then I began to pay attention. And uh, sure enough, Japan says, we want, we, they sued for peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, here I am, extra, t extra again. <laughs> so, my career in the service was I was I escaped any kind of combat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. They did give me a. Good, good contact ribbon, and they gave me a, a American theater ribbon. <laughs> well, you know that American theater, believe it or not, had some risk to it. They were shooting down, uh, and, and they were drop dropping uh, depth bombs on Japanese submarines, and mm -hmm. and then they, cause uh, they they did have a couple of guys that came in and blew up some stuff on the shores that we never knew about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that, that was about yeah. But I never got into that. Lucky. That was a good thing. He was very fortunate. Yes, yeah. definitely. So, Tootie, I was curious because um, it, the um, museum's only open uh, tomorrow from 10 to 2, is that correct? And then also... 9 to 3. Oh, nine, nine to three. But if you want, okay. uh, if you want to come in Sunday, we can do that. Or, uh -huh. or today, or yeah, today, actually. yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. No, I, the I reason why I was wondering because I, I archived really some of these digital photographs, really yeah. and I just well, uh, we can go back. You know, to maybe you yeah. have you some mind. of these already in the museum, but yes. I also, um, you know, I just have a bunch of these from yeah. my father's. You know, when he was in the, when he was in the. Uh, 
the West basketball Virginia. team. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Local, yeah. Yeah. They probably have all those. We have things. some. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Do okay. you remember any uh, uh, tri uh, Christmas traditions that you had at your house? Anything unusual or that stands out in your mind? Anything special or? At Christmas? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my Uncle Lloyd, <laughs> I guess I was very naive. Uh, he dressed up as Santa Claus upstairs. You know, he was living with my grandfather. And, uh, he was the youngest of my mother's brothers. My mother had four brothers. And uh, he never married until later. But he was living at that time with uh, my Arthur Dutton and, and Christabel Dutton. Mm -hmm. Then they were upstairs. And we had a Christmas tree. And the grandmother? Dad had gone Great out and cut, cut something out of the it's woods, you know. We, we didn't have any such thing as Christmas trees today. Uh, Hell, they wouldn't even let That's you. You couldn't sell one of those. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, you couldn't have. No. Uh, and uh, wow. But we decorated it up and down. And uh, uh, Uncle Lloyd dressed up like Santa Claus. He came down, and we were just kids. And I can remember cool. that as one of the. And I said, I, I really believed in Santa Claus for a while. Yeah. I said, he was here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, here I am a kid, you know. Yes. Well, she almost looks African American. Yeah. Well, she does. What you're talking about this picture. Any um, special gifts that you remember receiving? So we think we have, you know. Kick sled. Sure you did get a kick sure. sled. I got a kick sled finally. Sorry. Our history goes uh, back. There was a fellow that made kick sleds you know, here Indian. in Monson. Yep. So she's. Uh, what Aunt was his Aunt name? He was I down on Water Street somewhere. I think it was Johnson. Was Johnson. Clifton. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. And they got a kick sled. You know. The, the, yeah. And. Yeah. And we'd go on the pond with it when, when we could, because we couldn't go with the snow. Yeah, stove, no. <laughs> You no. didn't go out with George Bray, did no, you? No. No. <laughs> no getting led astray. No. <laughs> That's another thing, you know, speaking of kick sled. I don't know what I was doing. We were up opposite the old dump there, the slate dump out there somewhere. And uh, it was glare. The ice was glare. It was, it, there had been snow, but it had gotten wet and it was glare. Mm -hmm. And I slipped and I hit my head, knocked me out. And Arthur Bray, George Bray's father, he happened to be there with a kick slip. And uh, he, they, he loaded me on that kick slip. They, they were worried about me. They thought I had a concussion of them. Mm -hmm. And I can remember him going down the pond as fast as he could kick that kick sled, you know. <laughs> Did they take you to Dr. Viney? Oh, yeah, who else? <laughs> <laughs> and they take, I go, doctor takes me, looks at my eye. Well, he says, nothing wrong with him. <laughs> Instant diagnosis. <laughs> That's why he had so much respect, Dr. Vani did. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't mean to get off topic, but we I, I came across this picture. Oh, and, that's my grandmother. And we often thought that she looks a lot like Passamaquoddy or Penobscot. Yeah, there was Indian blood in us, you know. Are you sure? Yeah. She showed yeah. it more than anybody. Yeah, yeah. she showed Mitchell it. Mitchell is it. That's Mitchell, right? Mm -hmm. Mitchell. Yes. Is this Anna Mitchell? That Do was you know my father's about? mother, yeah. yeah. And what was her... Her name was Anna. Anna Mitchell. Yeah. Mitchell is an Indian, yeah. is a common it? Indian name. Well, she has yeah. yeah. to know. Yeah. Passamaquoddy? Passamaquoddy. Oh, no. Uh, Penobscot. No. Penobscot. Uh, came from the Penobscots. In fact, the, the, believe it or not, uh, Thoreau's guide 
his 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 given name was Mitchell, but it, I don't think yeah. there was any relation to. Yeah, from what you're saying, that was yeah, was that a name yeah. that they had adopted? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 So where did Anna live? Well, the huh? where did Anna Shirley. live? Shirley. Uh, they, Shirley? Uh, she was uh, when my grandfather had moved from, uh, as I said, as a blacksmith for the Shirley Lumber Company. Uh, Anna Mitchell and her family lived there, lived in uh, the Mitchells. There was, uh, oh, there was two brothers. Manly? Manly Mitchell? Uh, no, Alfonso. Yeah. And uh, Charles. Alonzo. Alonzo, Alonzo yeah. and Alfonso. Yeah. Huh. There were two brothers. Yeah. And they had gone out in the late, right after the Civil War sometime, and had gone to work up in Lowell. Lowell? No, no, it was Haverhill. Mer Merrimack. Um. Yeah, the, in any rate, it was a textile mill. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. We go by it uh, every time we come up on 495. Yeah. And two sisters from Scotland. Uh, their names were Shorey, S-H-O-R-E-Y. There was Olive Shorey and Dorcas Shorey. Interesting Scottish names. And those two brothers met those two women. Now the brothers, in, they both owned property in Shirley. One time. They took those two women with them. Married them, took them back to Shirley. Huh. And uh, they lived there until they died. They're both in the grave up there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and Anna Mitchell was Dorcas Shirley's daughter, along with one her sister. So uh, Anna is only. Ida Mitchell. So uh, Anna, Anna is Anna only Mitchell half Ida Mitchell. Indian. Is that right? She's only half Indian, Dad? Oh, she's not even half. She's, no. uh, okay. she just uh, it's just a, a trace of Indian blood in yeah. her, really. But it's okay. happened to show up somewhat. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mitchell actually married an yeah. Indian chief, Penobscot. It's in but she was half Scots, of course, yeah. and then the rest was uh, Archives. a mixture. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, Be interesting well, I guess it was French and Indian. Yeah. Uh, that uh, a half breed, they called it, yeah. back about three generations. Mm -hmm. We're all half breeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a very complimentary thing. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so, who's this picture of, Dad, when you were swimming in the coal pool? Who's that? That's one of your classmates. Now, that's Lawrence Wilkins. Oh, that's oh, Lawrence Wilkins. Oh. And that's me. Yeah. We're oh, over wow. in Little Wilson. We'd love to have a picture of that. Yeah. A copy so of that can, picture. Yeah. Yeah, can you, yeah. yeah, I could send you the whole oh, yeah. um, with That'd the name. Yeah. You could. Yeah. yeah. What about the fourth of July? Was that a big deal here in town? With fireworks or parades or anything? Oh, when I was When you were a kid? No. No. Uh it wasn't safe on Main Street. <laughs> we had firecrackers. And I hated them. I was oh. scared to death of them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah we'd throw was... firecrackers under your feet. <laughs> oh. And uh, no, I didn't like the fourth at all. Huh. No. Huh. And uh, the big guys would, the, you know, there's always a bully somewhere. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, he knew that he could pick on me. Mm. Took me a long time to turn on that son of a gun. <laughs> so you got him in the end? Huh? What'd you do happens. with him? Boom. <laughs> How'd you get even? I had a... <laughs> you know, you could take inner tubes <coughs> and you could cut out a piece of... Yep. Uh, with a clothespin. Yep. And you could make a... a uh, an elastic gun. Right, slingshot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had one of those. <laughs> um, this, 
<laughs> you waited. <laughs> he, he kept picking on me, kept picking it. I took the damn thing up and I put it right back and, he, <laughs> and I let it go. He's going home and it. He never bothered me again. Who was that? Can Who? we name names? <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Who was it, Dad? Yeah, he said, no, I'm not telling. Myron Zimmerman, the bastard. Myron? <laughs> Good. Yeah, he was a tall, tall, big guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not so tall and big after that. That's sure. That's uh, when he was. Uh, um, that's Dad and yeah. Doris and. What's that? And, oh, your picture of your. Oh mom. yeah, that yeah. just. Uh, that's me. And that's my sister. Yeah. That was before John was born. Yeah. Yeah. And that's your parents. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I'll send all these to you yeah. and you can weed through What them. about May baskets? Did you hang May baskets? Yeah. I yeah. kind of... I missed that. I kind of had a little yen for... What was her name? <laughs> well, Florence Ham. <laughs> and we'd hang a May basket, you know. Yeah. And Help you find a church? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> now she'd come there because we had some candy in it and all that for me. And chase me. <laughs> I'd run just a little ways and then I didn't I didn't run too fast. I, I found a nice place where there was a bush or something. You know, I'd let her catch me. And then she'd tip you over and she'd kiss you again. <laughs> Was was Florence was that Betty's sister? Florence Hammond, no. She was Ray Hammond's daughter. Uh, let's see, that's a different hat. No, no. Uh, uh, who who sister? Betty's. Betty Hammond. Yeah. Was there a sister or a cousin? They were sisters. Sisters, yeah. Have I got that name wrong? <laughs> oh God, it's not her all the time. <laughs> oh, you spread this poor yes, woman. <laughs> painted her. <laughs> That's when he was in the yeah. Oh, nice. Course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Florence okay. Hammond. Well, you know where they lived. You know. Mm -hmm. This I cut out of the Yankee magazine. And I said, for God's sake, this was in Yankee Magazine. I said, that, that's a church in Montenegro. Yes, it is. And uh, I, 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 I said, so I, uh, Florence Hammond and I used to smooch in yeah. back of that church. In back of that church, right, right there. Right there. Yeah. That would be the Swedish Lutheran church, <laughs> down by the water. Oh yeah. 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 What about Halloween? What kind of Halloweens oh. did you have? Oh. Yeah. Halloween, Dad. What was Halloween like? Oh. Uh, yeah, we used to go around. Uh, did you dress uh, up? Uh, 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 scaring each other. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't much so. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember Halloween as being that much. Uh, uh, they did have celebrations finally where they built a big bonfire out in the uh, little pond. Yeah. And uh, they'd bring in old tires and stuff. Out in the water. Uh, and they, they'd all. But I never was. Was much. that for ice skating or was it a celebration of some nature? Oh, was that their wedding? It was Halloween. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. Dad's and mom's wedding. Uh, a lot of, uh, I, uh, I was young then, and I don't know that I did much mm. activity. 
But that was, uh, yeah, they did that. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, I don't know. It, am I getting... I don't know. Any right, whatever. You getting tired? Huh? You getting tired? No, I'm not getting tired. Right <laughs> what about Jim White? Do you remember anything about Jim White who lived in Elliottsville? <laughs> My wife. No, White. White. Jim White, the hermit. Oh. The hermit. There's well, a lot about uh, all I know is the rumors, and I used to hear the rumors about him, and I also, of course, owned that piece of property that I bought in Elliotsville, and I used, there was a fellow down there, over there, that was sort of, uh, acted like, like a town, that was a, a plantation, that was a town, mm -hmm. yeah. and he had, uh, there was, well, what was it? Was it Frank Flint? Who? Frank Flint? Yeah, I think so. Anyhow, I paid my taxes to him for while well, they were still operating. And there was a pamphlet that he came out about um, Jim White's lookout. And I had gone up there with my father and mother with. Uh, when I was just a young kid, around 15, 16, and we walked up, we went to the little Wilson, walked up to Jim White's lookout. There was a cabin, it was a nice cabin, yeah. don't they? Oh, yeah. And uh, there was kind of an opening, and it was the fall of the year, and it was full, my 